Okay, I think we're ready to start. So welcome everybody to another uh, Cigar World Smoke in the Garage with Ricky. Uh, so uh, today, I, I think, uh, you know, last week we had a, a great guest, uh, Ernest, uh, the uh, purchaser of our tobacco. So uh, this week uh, we have a very, very special guest. Uh, the uh, gentleman is head of the uh, factories for in uh, Central America. Uh, both operations from uh, Honduras and Nicaragua. So, uh, welcome, Augustine. Hey, hey, man. How are you, Rick? Good, man. How are you doing today? Uh, I have been a very busy day, my friend. That's good. Uh, That's good. But happy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, welcome to, uh, to the event, and thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, so, you uh, know, my, my uh, pleasure, my pleasure. So uh, let's start this way. Uh, just introduce yourself. What do you do for the uh, the company? Okay, uh, actually, actually, I I in charge of the let's say for the manufacturing of the three handmade cigar factories or General Cigar. It is Honduras, Nicaragua, and Dominican Republic. So basically, uh, well. I am a tobacco guy, so I ensure the cigar of the cigar making, all the tobacco processing, box making, everything related, you know, with the core business of the company. Um, so that is that is what I'm doing now. So how long have you been with uh, General Cigar or SCG? Uh, close to 17 years. Okay, because I think I we first met about maybe going on 14 years ago when I started a train uh, for General Cigar, right? Yes, yes. Well, I, I remember that actually. Oh, I do too, bro. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was it was it was about 14 years ago, as you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Uh, it was in Honduras, actually. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're uh, still in you, school. You're still because I remember you leaving the factories uh, some evenings to go to school. Exactly right. Well, no, no, no. I, actually, at that at that time, I I just I just was uh, studying my MBA yeah. uh, in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, the capital of, of Honduras. Right. On weekends. On weekends. That's that's why. Yes. Yeah. So that you left me uh, uh, in the factory alone for the weekend. With it, nobody there, <laughs> nobody there. So yeah, I, I remember the stories too, Augustine. I remember the stories. Yeah. But, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, working with you for the last, uh, you know, fourteen years has been an honor for me. Just to watch you grow in the uh, uh, the business, because I remember when I first met you. Um, you maybe I'm right or wrong, but I thought you were in charge of fermentation at that time. Yeah, when, when I started, uh, as you remember, Rick, uh, it was uh, about two and a half years just in training uh, in the whole, the, you know, tobacco uh, aspect, let's say from growing to smoke. Um, and then, yes, and then, uh, well, I started actually in Nicaragua in, the, in, in one of the Placencia farm in Jalapa Valley. Okay. I spent more than a year there, and then uh, I was moved to the tobacco processing areas in Honduras. At that time, I remember Genela has a, 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 in downtown, Dan Lee, okay. uh, a factory there. So I, I, I started the role in there as part of my, of my training. And then I was moved to Cofradilla, another factory in Honduras that we used to have. And then I was moved to the DR. Uh, in the DR process, I, let's say I, I also look at everything from growing to smoke. Uh, so, and then when basically the company that acquired US cigar brands, Don Tomas, Healy's, all these, uh, I, I just uh, come back to Dan Lee, actually. Uh, and, and you're right, I started being responsible in the fermentation area at that time. Uh, yeah, I, it was a really, really nice uh, time that because uh, I learned a lot. My friend, it was a lot of responsibility that at, at that time. I just was a, a kid, a baby, yes, uh, yeah, with a lot of responsibility. And I remember actually the general cigar president at that time, Daniel Nunez, told me, 
Agustin, you need to be focused on tobacco. You need to be an expert in tobacco. So forget the office. It just to be just just focus on tobacco. You need to to get your hand dirty uh, and and learn smoke, uh, live uh, with tobacco. So it was a lot of a lot of tobacco process at that time. It was about two million pounds a year that I was responsible to process. So I'm not started. Uh, it was it was amazing, but because since I started, I never stopped. I never yeah. stopped learning. Actually, exactly. Uh, and after that, actually, it was a, I started, you know, looking and into cigar making areas. So I became responsible as well for the cigar making area in Honduras. Uh, and then later. Uh, we jumped to Nicaragua and I was the responsible as well for the cigar making and processing area in Nicaragua and now across the three, the three sites. So uh, like I've said over and over, some of these guys that uh, trained you and me were legendary guys in this uh, business. And so unfortunately uh, for cigar smokers in the U.S., we concentrate on the face of that line. But behind the scenes, when I'm doing my offense, yeah, maybe I'm in the face of for CAO, but behind me is a great team of, uh, of tobacco guys and girls that are, you know, uh, either growing the tobacco, fermenting the tobacco, aging and uh, blending and rolling and all that. So everybody that we came in touch with are some of the greatest people that we learned from and this, you know, this industry called cigars is amazing. Uh, the the people that uh, touch our lives and share their knowledge with us. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Rick. As you mentioned, behind us is basically uh, a very well talent, you know, team. Uh, now, uh, actually, and in the in the past, actually, it was a, a lot of the good people actually that they. They toast. They 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 trained us. Uh, just to give you a few names, as you as you know, Benji was was key in this. Uh, Daniel Luñez, the Saint Placencia, uh, Modesto from the Ur. There is a lot of people. Estelo Padrón, Perez Carrillo. So there is a lot of people actually, and that is, I think, what had been amazing in this business. Because let me tell you something, my friend. When I started, I was really surprised, you know, in every single site, every single site, uh, factory or tobacco processing uh, area that I visited, I, I, I always heard something like, uh, I the best, I am the best. So after that, I said, well, everybody said the same. So you, I went to the, uh, let's say Padron or, or somebody else at, the, at that time, the same Placencias. So everybody said, I'm the best. So what, but I ask it. So we have a, a lot of people that selling the, telling the same. So that it was good actually, because when you have a lot of people around you uh, with, a, with a good uh, knowledge uh, and very talented people and that love this business, it's amazing how you can learn, actually, and how you can take the best of everyone and say, okay, uh, for it, just to give you an example that I remember, Estelo Padron told me one day, you need to ferment the tobacco in this way. Just apply a, a, play, a lot of water and ferment it, turn it, and this, this, and this in this way. But uh, in the case of Placencia, for it, was not agree with that. So he right. said, okay. So who was wrong? Both. They're exactly. Both, both, both are right. Both are right, actually, because it depends. It depends. The tobacco always tells what to do, actually. And there is a several, several step, a step in the tobacco, let's say, process that you need to learn. Let's say all the primings, all, all let's say, all the, the texture. The, the different, uh, let's say, color, graded, grades, uh, uh, how the tobacco look, uh, how the tobacco came from the field, 
So there, there is a, a, an amazing word actually to understand, you know, how to treat you, the, the, the tobacco. Actually, that is, that is something amazing, amazing that you can learn uh, constantly, you know, in this, in this. And this uh, learn uh, different techniques. Uh, the beauty of uh, making cigars are, uh, you know, being able to uh, get into this business, uh, learning from a variety of guys that teach you a variety of uh, situations. In, uh, but that also uh, offer, uh, offers the cigar smoker different cigars. And that is the beauty. Because I've always been amazed, and one of the, uh, my stories I've always shared, when you look at the three factories that you uh, run right now, DR, Honduras, and Nicaragua, they're separate. And their techniques are separate. And their rolling uh, techniques are separate. That's a good thing, because what we're not doing is giving you a McDonald's and the DR and the McDonald's and, uh, you know, uh, Honduras and Nicaragua, they're all the same. Well, we have all the same, you're producing all the same cigars. And But what you're doing for our team is allowing each factory to run itself. But also, go to, back to the guys that tra trained you and me, I was always amazed at how willing, if they thought that you were interested and were willing to work hard, they'll share anything with you. But if they sit that you don't care, or you were just collecting a check, they had no time for you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so let's uh, get down to uh, some questions. So the main question I think everybody wants to know is, uh, what is an honor to be able to work with me? Every <laughs> no. <laughs> so we only have an hour show. So it can, if you can hold it down for about 45 minutes and just tell everybody what an honor it is to work with me alongside. <laughs> but no, uh, no, it, it, it has been a long time, my friend. It yeah. has been a, a long time. Yeah. You are my brother. We are, we are family basically, uh, and yeah, we, we had to spend very good times. And actually, what we have the debating, what we have discussed, what we have uh, tested, uh, doing a lot of stuff together, that is is, is something amazing. Yeah. You know, and always remember you as, a, okay, let's put this leaf because uh, I need more body. So so that is something that they, even the, all the guys at the factory say, well, uh, we need to, to do this, this, and this, and improve this, and this, and this. Uh, in order to, 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 to achieve, you know, uh, to have the right product. Uh, that, 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 is, that is interesting, really. I, I remember, for instance, when we, we, when we work, for instance, with the whole team, uh, and you and me in the, in the, in the Amazon Basin. Yeah. For instance, it was amazing how we start, you know, testing all the Braganca tobacco coming from Brazil, in different percentages, remember 100, yeah, yeah, yeah. 40, 60. It was a bond at the beginning of what was something really, really unique. And you say, wow. So that is part of the or of the of the of the beauty of this business. And and as well working with you. Um, that is that is that is something what you have someone in, in front of you uh, that love that business. That is easier, you know. Yeah, it's easier yeah, because yeah, yeah. we can we can share the same feeling. We can say the the, the same word. We can yeah. talk tobacco any time that we want. Yeah, because if, to, for me to you uh, to be able to launch a cigar and uh, realize how much we're helping that factories and all your employees, that brings more more joy than any cigar that. Uh, because of the price point, the money we're making. For me to you, it's about the family. It's about the factories, about the friendships that I've made throughout the years with these guys. And when you start to see these guys over and over and you get involved with their families and you reach out and it, it goes from uh, working with his, uh, each other into a friendship. And that's something beautiful. That This is the reason I enjoy and love this business. It really is because, uh, again, there's not a lot of business that are handmade. Every cigar that we produce is a handmade cigar. And so look at the cigar that you're smoking right now. We didn't know uh, when we were working that blend 
that it's going to be such a hit for us. But we knew that we worked hard to try to get you a greater blend. And so, but uh, it's amazing. So uh, my question, uh, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll turn it to uh, Gary, kind of uh, frozen. Augustine, you are frozen right now. Can you hear me? So Gary, uh, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Yeah. So any questions right there, uh, you know, uh, anybody wants to ask uh, Augustine? Or me. Yeah, we, we do have some questions that are coming in too. Um, so the first one is from Don Smith, who wants to say hello. So he's smoking a 770 flathead right now. Okay. And he wants to know what you guys are working on in the near future for new cigars. If you have anything that you guys are working on together, or Rick, if you're working on anything, that right. you might be working on separately, but are you guys working on, on any new projects? Well, the, uh, the newest cigar that we're going to be able to uh, talk about that was going to be released, I think, in uh, June is the bones. Uh, so that's a project uh, that uh, we started to work on uh, with a team about a year ago. And uh, Augustine, can you, uh, you know, maybe talk about the bones a, a little bit? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the not, not, you know what, uh, not, you know, kind of, uh, uh, we don't want to talk about the blend. Uh, I think uh, more about the flavor and the body, because I think when I was smoking these test samples, the body is maybe a medium to a uh, full body cigar, if not a full body cigar. Agree? Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, as you remember, remember it was about three months ago when we worked and the tobacco warehouse in Honduras smoking and tasting different wrapper, Connecticut probably wrapper at this time. Uh, and you know the story, how, how the thing and you and me uh, was surprised actually with the result of this plan. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there is that is something really, let's say, or medium to full full body cigar actually, mm -hmm. uh, full flavor. I think it had a lot of character, um, and it's amazing, you know. And and, in, and for this plan actually is is the combination of this. Uh, Key filler that we we, we use for uh, some of them are, are fully fermented and some of them are sure fermented. That is that is something that the the to, to find the right balance. Uh, so it is it, it's, it's an amazing cigar actually for yeah. sure. The, for sure, the guys gonna love that cigar. Yeah, I agree. I think the, uh, the the cigar speaks for itself, but the presentation that marketing and you guys uh, uh, came about and uh, were going to watch is uh, the presentation, the smoke itself, the sizes that we choose for the uh, initial launch and the price points are great. So uh, that uh, kind of goes back for me to ask you a question. If you had to choose one or two wrappers that you really like to work with, what's your one or two favorite rappers to work with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. Well, it's, hard. it's hard. It's hard. No, but that, that's, that's a, a very good question, actually, because let me tell you, uh, I did this question uh, to most of the team. It was last year, actually. It was a, I think it was in Honduras or Nicaragua. It was, it was in Honduras. And I said, guy, listen, we have, a big family, you know, general have a big, uh, a big portfolio brand. And, and we need to provide, this is our responsibility to provide something unique to every single brand, aligning, you know, with the, with the consumer that they wanted the, this. So what happened? When we start thinking, we say, okay, guys, uh, we need to think exactly that as you question, uh, uh, is just forget all the tobaccos in the world and just choose one wrapper, one binder, and three long fillers for this plane. There is no more uh, available in the whole world. So just focus, be concentrated, and, 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 do, and, do, and do the job. So that's, that's the beauty of this. Actually, I had my preferred wrappers. I had my preferred binder and fillers. 
I have played with that a lot of tobacco. That's that's it. My that's my passion actually. It's one of my passion. Right. Um. And for me, for me, uh, let's say the original seed. Let's say the the ugliest Ecuadorian Sumatra is one of my favorites. Uh, actually, yeah. wow! This is you have, for instance, uh, uh, upper priming, and you fully ferment. Let's say short fermented but long aging okay. to this wrapper, and then you can apply to whatever cigar you can you, you can choose. And it changed completely, you know, the, the, the smoking experience when you had a very well aged and fermented wrapper like, like Ecuadorian Sumatra, uh, for instance, in the, in the, in the, I mean, uh, in the original seed. So, and then you have, well, in my, in my, the, my, my second wrapper in the list for sure should be the, or gonna be, the, or is, the Connecticut Broad Leaf, the Maduro one. I love the wrapper. Uh, actually, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I was a little bit, uh, it was in the past, uh, in the middle of the scots or, or shoes, for instance, on Matafina or Mata Norte wrapper instead of the Connecticut Broad Leaf, because all the Brazilian stuff is, is amazing taste. It is, it is yes. Uh, but actually, the, the, the Connecticut Blue List is, is, is amazing. Uh, and the last one, just to give you three, uh, I can say for sure that the Hamastran, Honduran Hamastran wrapper is one of the, of the best wrapper uh, for me to blend, to enjoy, to smoke. Yeah. You can eat it. Yeah. You know, is, is, that is something really, really good. And just to be clear, all depends how you you manage, you, yes, yes, you, you yes. talk to the tobacco because yes. some of the people can say, some of the guy even that they, that, that they, they are right now in, 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 this, in, this, in this event can say, well, I have tried this wrapper, it's not a big deal. But guy, it depends how we can ferment it because always we say, we don't care sometimes it doesn't matter sometimes getting the best wrapper from the tobacco field because if you destroy it in the fermentation, yes, yes, yes. you're dead. Yes. It's, it's not the same. Absolutely, it's, it's completely different. Yeah. So is is agricultural practice is is getting a very well very well a wrapper from the tobacco field and then is in the proper 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 fermentation process. And the last part is how you made the cigar and you aged that cigar, actually. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the story, there are different, uh, actually, uh, let's say, components in this. Actually, in the tobacco field, for sure, you can generate an amazing wrapper, but in the curing, you can destroy the wrapper as well. Exactly. So at the end is tobacco field, curing, fermentation, and at the end, cigar making plus aging. So there is is a is 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 a package. It's not to have just one of them. Yeah, because I've always said to everybody that I talk to, uh, the most important uh, aspect are, are of a factory is the fermentation area, because again, the growers can produce some great tobaccos, but then the wrong hands they can take that, that great tobacco and ruin it. It's like giving a you know a Ferrari to a kid. You know, he's not going to be able to handle that power. So uh, that that car should be drove, uh, uh, driven by somebody that knows how to drive those cars. So because we receive great tobacco doesn't mean every manufacturer could work with that tobacco. So uh, but uh, going back to your top three, I think, uh, you know, I, I said uh, the last week uh, that question was asked of me. And I would say to me, uh, Broadleaf is my favorite rapper to work really? with. Really? Really? Yeah. And then uh, Sumatra is my uh, second favorite. So reverse. But uh, yeah, I, I agree because I think those uh, two rappers, you can take them from a mild cigar to a full body cigar. I've always said Broadleaf to me is like a highway with multiple uh, uh, exits. Oh, you want a mild cigar? Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, Macanudo makes their uh, Maduro. 
very mild, but they're using a Connecticut uh, broadleaf. Oh, but we can now also offer Connecticut broadleaf and flathead. And that cigar is not like Macanudo, you know? So I've, I agree with you. Uh, so uh, Gary, any more questions? Because uh, I can take ev everybody's time out. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so we've got a question on, also on Bones, where the name came from and how you guys came up with the marketing ideas for Bones. Bones were simple because when I was uh, talking to uh, uh, Doug, uh, he's the head of uh, marketing uh, for uh, CAO, uh, I knew I wanted to use this uh, uh, name Bones because I just uh, like uh, that, that word. But it also getting kind of deep, uh, deeper into uh, the question to, uh, from uh, Doug was, why Bones? Well, when we play dominoes in Tampa or Miami, you're never going to say to your friends, we're going to get together and play domino tonight. What you're going to do is say, hey, bro, we're going to slap down some bones. And so bones, uh, in my eyes, equal uh, the game called dominoes. But up north, when you go to the alley and start to roll the dice and gamble, you're going to say, hey, we're going to throw some bones tonight. And so that uh, represents dom I mean, uh, dice games to these guys. So when you uh, see this box and you open the box up, there's two dice in the box. And so that's, you know, kind of leading you know, the way to the, this uh, name Bones represents either dominoes or uh, uh, dice. Yep. All right. So this next question is for both of you. It's from David. And he would like to know if there is one, uh, you know, part of the process of making a cigar that you would consider the most important. I think uh, Augustine touched uh, on it uh, just, uh, you know, uh, about uh, five minutes ago. I think it's a fermentation because the farmers can give you a great tobacco. And the, through the process of fermentation and aging, uh, at the end of the day, what you have is a uh, ruined because you didn't, you know, uh, ferment it the right way or you didn't age it the right way. So, uh, Augustine, you agree? Uh, fermentation is <laughs> the most important, right? <laughs> well... And blending there, is good. There, there is a, a, a an holistic uh, uh, integrated process actually but of course uh, the fermentation process is key you know to have an excellent cigar in your mouth just to give you an example for instance in the Connecticut broad leaf cake that is your favorite wrapper rig. so let, let me tell you a story when I started it was about the uh, I say five six years ago, I, I did an experiment with the Connecticut draw leaf. Let's say, I, I'm gonna explain very quickly, you know, the process, the, the current process. So after the receiving from the farm, we ferment for about, the first fermentation is loose leaf uh, because that tobacco is receiving in, in bundles. So it's about three months, you know, and, and, and the temperature need to be about 100, 110 max Fahrenheit degrees. And you need to turn it every, every tobacco pile, uh, let's say about 20, 25 days, 15 to 25 days. So after that, you say, okay, how the tobacco looks? That is, is ready to sort. So you sort and you separate wrapper, binder, fillet, everything. And then the tobacco came to the second fermentation. That is about a month, a month and a half. And then, so, the temperature, the, the weight, everything changed in this process. Uh, and in this second fermentation, but after that, the tobacco is put in, in tobacco bales. So 100, 150 pounds each. So, and you need to rest for at least six months there, at least, at least. We have in some cases, two years, you know, it, it depends. Uh, actually, and after that, when the tobacco is ready to be used, let's say uh, you plan in front to have it ready for production, you say, okay, this tobacco is gonna be used in December. So you started put it again, third fermentation in June. So it's about three or four months, last fermentation. The process is completely different because in this last fermentation, of course, you need to define the color very well you need to give that touch, you know, in, in taste, all the, the organoleptic characteristics need to be there in terms of not only in, in appearance, you know, it's, it's, 
It's the overall taste, how the tobacco look, the stretch, everything. So if you, if you can't, there is a long process. So I said at the beginning, why we need to put it in the bale? So we can ferment it after the second fermentation, just keep it in the fermentation area for let's say the same time that the, we, we currently are doing. So it means three or four months more, but after, so it means continuous. And you know what? The result was completely different. You know, I did the experiment. He said, wow, this is, is not, is, this is not my tobacco. What happened? Because the tobacco need time. That's, that is something really, really, really necessary. That is something uh, extremely important. Okay. Every single tobacco, you need to give what he needs. So, so for sure, it's, it's, an important, it's a very important element. So let me ask you this. Uh, if When you go to that second fermentation, now you bail it to age it. What happens in uh, the bell that you age for two years versus six months or a year? That is for more you know, mild cigars or medium body cigars. What happens to that? <laughs> All the pain and the condition that you store is the tobacco. Okay. okay. So for sure, for instance, you, you have, let's say about 40, 16% moisture in the tobacco bale, mm -hmm. and you can keep it there they say for six months, a year. Uh, so if you actually there is the tobacco, uh, that is the moisture in the tobacco. And then you need to, to, to monitor the, the relative humidity in the warehouse as okay. well. So okay. if, the, if the environment uh, or, the rel or the temperature is too high, actually it's gonna impact on the tobacco. So, but at the end of the story, If you keep in the proper condition of tobacco, you know, that is some, some point, that is some, uh, let's say, some um, point in the process that you said, that's the way or that's the point or that's the time that I need to take it to smoke, to try. So it depends on the cigar profile that you are pursuing, actually, okay. but at that and independent of every single uh, tobacco seed. But actually you can say, okay, after six months, so, and you ferment uh, three months more, um, and the taste is gonna be almost the same. So you, you need to know every single tobacco to say, okay, this is amazing how it changed when you, for instance, uh, keep instead of six months to two years. Yeah. So in this case of the Connecticut Bro lease, what my, my experience tell me is a lixic monk, you can have the same effect in your in taste when you ferment, for instance, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. Uh, and you, you smoke the sales, it's basically the same. So it depends. At the end, it depends on every single tobacco, it depends on every single texture of the tobacco, how you pack, uh, because sometimes you make big, big bales, sometimes you make something like that. So the condition when you store the tobacco, so at the end, uh, that, that is something that uh, we, we need to manage properly. Well, let, let, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, so I've been to these uh, uh, warehouses that the uh, aging tobacco, but if you start to stack those, those bales, does fermentation start because it's heavy on the bottom in the middle, Towards the top, do you rotate those uh, those bells as tobacco, or they're okay because your environment is uh, okay? Do you have to rotate those tobacco bells? Sometimes yes, sometimes okay. yes. All the pain or the or the fermentation state that you or the, well, yeah, or the fermentation state that you have in this bell. Okay. Because sometimes you say, okay, I'm gonna keep it uh, here in the in the warehouse. But it's basically just to give you a very, very, let's say, a very a slow fermentation. Okay. Because at the end of the story, the aging process is kind of fermentation. And and and, and that in that in that in that sense, it's basically very slowly fermentation process. It is not the same actually 
And okay. that is, for instance, in, in the case of any Conerico, Conerico from Brazil, Conerico from Ecuador, Conerico from Honduras. So is, that is something uh, extremely important because uh, you normally play with the color in the case of the Conericos. You say, okay, what I need uh, or what I want in the Conericos. I need a beautiful and yellow, uh, let's say color, uh, or I need taste. Okay. Because sometimes you need to sacrifice some of them. You can have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yellow wrapper, Conerico shade color, but it means that you need also to use, you know, without too, not too much fermentation or aging process. Because anyhow, if you keep for three or four months uh, the Conerico, uh, any base of Conerico, uh, they're gonna start losing the, that uh, yellow, uh, yellow color little by little. Okay. You know, when you put it in, 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 in a warehouse or whatever, or in the same booking area. So it, it depends. All right, uh, Gary, any more questions? Yeah, we've got a question from Duff, and this one is for Augustine. He wants to know if you have any favorite cigar and uh, spirit pairings. Uh, yeah, and yeah. any favorite drinks that you like to drink with your cigars? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, Augustine, I, I've seen you with a drink one time at a party in Vegas. Uh, that's the only time. So, uh, but uh, uh, instead of, uh, you know, your pairing, or do you have a pairing? Do you like <laughs> rum? Are you like, uh, what do you, if you're with your friends and you're having a cocktail, is it a beer? Is it a fruity drink? What is it? I, I want to know. I, I, I'm not a good drinker actually, yes. but <laughs> but I, I, I love I love actually uh, to combine my red wine actually with the uh, <laughs> you're not gonna believe it, but the uh, uh, I, I like to enjoy a flathead six by sixty actually right. uh, with a very good red wine. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. That's, that's my know. favorite uh, lazy period combination. So I, so I now would uh, to get you for Christmas a box of cigars and a, a good bottle of red wine. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, Gary. All right. So this next one is from Howard, and this is a pretty interesting question uh, for both of you, but maybe more a little bit for you, Augustine. What is the longest that you guys have ever held on to a blend in the factory before you've actually used it to go into production? Oh. Wow. wow. <laughs> okay, but I, I tell, me tell, you, tell, uh, tell me, Rick, no, Rick, no, Rick, go ahead, go ahead, Rick. I, I want to say this. When you're uh, working uh, with anybody, uh, making a cigar for me, for Punch, for Excalibur, for Ahoya, for Mechanito, there's certain blends that don't reach that target. If they say, I want a medium body cigar with some sweetness, but through the process of blending, you discovered a, you know, a medium to full body cigar with some pepper notes. And so you hold that, you, you save that, right? Because we just don't get rid of it. So it's hard to say what's the oldest blend. Maybe you can't say what is the oldest blend that you ever said, wow, we blended that cigar 10 years ago and we're now <laughs> going to use it okay yeah well uh, actually the, the longest one it was no ceo sorry rick actually no, it was remember the famous oil oil de monterrey reposado in cedros yes yes so when we start working on it uh it was a long long process because actually we tried several good types several local herbs a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, amazing stuff. So and 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 the challenge was at that at that time how we can perceive in the taste, how we can taste, you know, that you are uh, smelling, for instance. That is not easy. It's, it's, it's not easy. Sometimes you say, "Wow, this is a beautiful, let's say, wood, or so, or a very flavorful, uh, aromatic wood." But when you try to to go to the tobacco, that is not easy that the tobacco absorb, you know, that 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 flavor is 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 really, really difficult in, in, in this in this in this sense when it's natural. I mean, 
you can but, uh, you can you can do whatever you want in, in terms of the of the flavor side, but the uh, flavor cigar side. But uh, so we tried several 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 process, and the end when we decide to to use cedar, that it was a local cedar from Nicaragua actually. We said okay, now we need to try uh, six months, three months, ten months. You know, just putting the tobacco, the cigar immersed in, in this in this uh, cedar shapes, and you know the result. Uh, but actually, after that, when we uh, in one of the blend read that you remember that we spent uh, a lot of time and, and you 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 make a, a very good story in this. It was with the flathead actually with the same flathead because as you remember. The flathead came not not uh, exactly from that the, the route that we are looking for, right? Right. Because right. I remember that you took the sample. You said, "Okay, I'm gonna smoke and and focus on this plan," uh, and it was about six months, you know, at that time. Right. Uh, before you 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 jump and you say, "Wow, this plan! Why we reject this plan? Because it's, it is something amazing." Yeah. And I remember that, and it's wow. That, so and we start thinking, and I remember that we discussed that in, uh, in, the, in the office or the operation manager uh, at that time, and you said, now we need to find a name. Remember the story with the name and everything? Yes. Uh, it was amazing that, yeah. and it was uh, the blend that we, you know, we, we spent, you know, more time, let's say, uh, you know, discussing and improving, because after that, that you said that, we start working how when improve that. Yeah, because I remember we're testing the cigars round two, and uh, one of your uh, uh, managers on the floor, uh, I I don't remember who it was, but he says let's start to box press it and see that that would be you know make a cigar better. And we box press. I'm like, okay, I I was not a fan of box press before that. And I'm a true believer in box press cigars today. Yeah, for sure. So, very good. All right, Gary. All right, so we've got a great question from Michael. He would like to know what cigar release um, you were most excited or nervous about to see how consumers would react. Uh, I'll take it first, uh, Augustine. I think for me, uh, it was uh, the, um, uh, the uh, uh, Amazon Basin. Because we mm -hmm. knew the challenge uh, that uh, lied behind, uh, you know, ahead of us. We didn't know how to work with the tobacco, and I that that was something we were very excited to work with the tobacco, but we didn't know what to do with the tobacco, and it was so different. We didn't know how the consumers were going to adjust to the cigar, and so I think for me, I've never been more nervous. To uh, release a cigar that uh, like uh, Amazon basis, yeah. Uh, 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 let me tell you something, Rick. That I, I completely agree with this because I remember my friend in the IPCPR in Vegas when we launched this cigar. Uh, well, first of all, when you go to a cigar event like this or, or to any event, you you will you will have. Have, you know, most of, of the cigar manufacturing telling you, listen, guy, this cigar is different. This cigar use uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominica, yeah, da, da, da. Uh, we use this wrapper from Condega and a lot of story behind. Yes, you know that. Uh, and actually, when we said this cigar is different, it, because it's, it is different, uh, and, and it was something that the, it, it gonna be a hit, Oh, it's gonna be a disaster. Actually, it was it was something really really challenging for 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 all of us. I, I completely agree on that. Yeah, because uh, that year we also launched uh, the uh, Columbia. Remember, that was the the first time that we had a multiple launch under CAO. So one side was the uh, Brazilian, I mean uh, the Amazon base, and the other side was the uh, the uh, Columbia, and so. And that was the first time that uh, General Cigar offered a cigar without a pre-pack. Back in the days, guys, we had a pre-pack, meaning if it had multiple sizes, you had to buy as a shop owner about three or uh, five sizes of each size. So if I had three sizes, you had to buy a uh, kit or 
uh, uh, you know, 15 uh, 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 boxes of cigars. But for Amazon Basin, I remember we we're standing in that thing and said, well, how many boxes do I need to buy? <laughs> Are you want to buy one? Are you want to buy 1,000? We don't care. We don't know. And so we, it was fun to, and we had a little boat in our, our, our booth uh, for the Amazon. That was great. It was great. It was but, really uh, yeah. great. Uh, but uh, I think that was the most nervous because uh, Flathead, we knew that we had something special. And Flathead, uh, with the design of the box and the presentation, the, the blend and the sizes and the price points, they're all, we knew that we we're going to have something special. And thank God everybody reacted to that cigar. It's still one of your uh, number one uh, cigars that you produced, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I actually, Reed, just, just to add something to, to the Flathead line, uh, let me tell you, I was a little bit nervous with the 7 by 70 Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's amazing how this cigar is, <laughs> it, it was accepted, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, well, this, this is a big cigar, my friend. It's, wow. <laughs> uh, but it, look. <laughs> so, you, you know, uh, to answer your question, you know what, we're all nervous all the time because, again, <laughs> Every manufacturer, not only ours, every manufacturer that shows up to that show believes in their heart that they worked hard to produce a great cigar. At the end of the day, it's up to the public to receive that cigar and say, I agree with you guys. This is a great cigar. Because uh, don't, don't kid yourself. We don't want to stand in front of anybody and pretend we like the cigar <laughs> and smoke it. And you're like, oh, buy the cigar. <laughs> that was a great cigar. No. <laughs> so you have to believe in every project, but sometimes you just break gold. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But the CAO has been uh, unbelievable. Since you and me and uh, the old, the team started to work with the CEO now going on 10 years ago, What? look at what we did with this company and the growth of this company from day one when we're like a CAO. No, I want to work on Punch or La Gloria. I don't want to work for CAO, but uh, <laughs> it has been a, a great ride for us. All right, I think we have a, a, a time for one more question, Gary. All right, so we've got another good one. A songwriter may get inspiration from a life event. Where does the inspiration come from for a new cigar? Is it from the tobacco? Is it from a certain sort of taste that you're looking to achieve? I think as a combination of, uh, you know, listen to your fans, uh, they will, you know, kind of, kind of tell you what they're looking for. Uh, but um, Augustine, how do you answer that question? Because. <laughs> well, things have changed, you know, I, I remember when I started smoke uh, the punch for instance, Rick, uh, in the past, it was 15, 16, 17 years ago. Uh, at that time, it was like a, a regular punch. was like, a, wow, this is, was medium to full, almost full body cigar. But now, we know the story. We have several uh, cigars that they were more strained, full flavor, and were more strained than the, the, the punch one. The same flathead is an example. The, the, and, and many other that and not only from general but but also for many many companies. Um, so in this respect, now if you if you take a a, a punch, it, it, it doesn't mean that it has changed, but it means that the consumer trend yes, has changed. Yes, yes. So yes. it mean it means that now you you need to focus on how you can deliver excellent product, good product. To what the consumer wants, you know that that's we live for that. We live for that actually. I agree. Since we since we start and and and, and you know that we say okay, uh, and let me tell you that is that is that is something t uh, normal in our business is to say okay guys look at this cigar, it could be from us, it could be from someone else, but if we see something really that the the, the consumers are looking for. So immediately we say, okay, you know that that is that is our marketing role as well. They say, okay, guys, we need to provide to to our consumer something like that because they are looking for. Yes. So after that, we say, okay, now we need to to translate 
what we want with the tobaccos that we need for. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're gonna have it in our inventory or sometimes we need to look for, or sometimes you need to ferment something different to achieve that. But overall is to provide to, to, our, to, our, to our consumer, you know, what they really want. That's, right. that's, that's for sure. Yeah, because a marketing will get involved, uh, but uh, it really is about the fans of uh, you know the, your line. So for me, it's about the, my fans for CAO delivering. If they come to us and say, you know what, you're missing a, a mom's body cigar, and uh, over time, if you hear that enough, we're going to react to that. So uh, for me, to you guys, uh, you know, your input is very valuable to any manufacturer you like. So if you have the opportunity to uh, reach out to me or you ever see Augustine in an event, uh, talk to him and say, you know what, uh, you know, I think CEO or Punch or uh, Cohiba is missing this. And if we hear that enough, we're going to react to that market and deliver that fan base that what they want. So, but uh, you know what, we're going to get uh, kicked out. Uh, Augustine, thank you so much, bro. You know how much I love you and your team and uh, tell everybody I said hello, but uh, before we go, uh, I know that uh, yesterday was a special day in the factory. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Yesterday was a special day in your life. And so uh, Susan has something <laughs> for you. Happy Hi. birthday to wow. you. <laughs> to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Adieu, bro. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank wait, you very much. Gotta wait, go out the no, wait, make your wish. Make your wish. All right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Wow, there you go. All right, Augustine. I, I love you so much, bro. Thank you so much. I know you are so busy. Get back to work. Make some great cigars for us. And uh, I'll see you soon, my friend. Can yes, you uh, thank, thank you, thank you to everyone. Just, uh, just my my last word. Uh, uh, well, from this meeting, from this <laughs> from this event. Thank you, guy. I love you all. Of you, thank you to everyone that is connected. Actually, uh, people who follow Rick, who followed us. That is something uh, very grateful. That is something that we really appreciate that because we live because of you. Actually, all what we do is for you. So I'm really passionate about, uh, you know, that, uh, that, uh, that people, that consumer, that friends that uh, constantly, you know, are, are pushing us to give better product. Actually, this is our, uh, is, uh, is, our uh, is, is our goal, you know, to provide excellent product. So thank you, thank you to everyone. You know that is my pleasure, and as well, there there is actually there is no Rick and I. There is there is a big big uh, group of talented people in every single factory that we have. That, that every day we 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 are just focused to provide excellent products. Yeah. Since Nicaragua with Hector Banegas in Honduras, we have Kevin Fausto, Hector. Marlon, a lot of people, Manuel, and in Dominican, we have Yuri, Manuel, uh, Ramon Emilio, so is the Saint Don Johnny's. There is a lot of talented people uh, that, is, uh, that is working together, you know, and supporting this, 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 this family, this business. Yeah, you're doing a great job, bro. Uh, continue your success, and I love you, and I'll definitely see you soon, okay? All right, guys, uh, thank you so much for another uh, night. And so uh, stay safe, uh, stay well, and I'll see you next Thursday. And uh, I don't think we're going to have a guest like this ever again. So I'll try, but I, don't, I think we hit the top of the mountain with uh, uh, Augustine. All right, guys, take care, guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't say it right now. Uh, uh,